So I'm Sarah Sheldon. I'm from the city of Asheville. Um, this is Lou Garcia from Timmins Group. And we're here to talk a little bit about preparing your team for asset management. So if you're here for the last session, uh, Raleigh talked about their advanced uh, asset management use. We're going to take a step back and say, how do you prepare to get there? Thanks, Sarah. Oh, that's loud. <laughs> All right. So next slide. All right. So the last group, they talked about uh, who's using CityWorks. So who is, who's thinking about doing asset management or is starting to do it now? Thinking about it? All right, so th this will be a little bit more directed towards you folks, um, but I always use this slide when I talk to people about asset management. Um, asset management is not a piece of software. That's the first thing you need to know, and it's not data either. It's, it's a lot of different components. So I've got six different groups up here. But when you really start looking at doing asset management, you have to look at all these different criteria that are going on within your organization. Um, because really, the, the words I have in red are what's important. These are, should be your goals of what you're trying to get out of asset management. But again, going back to is your organization set up, do you understand what risk is? Um, you know, risk is things like a water line to a hospital has a higher risk value to you than a water line into a cul-de-sac, right? That's kind of uh, pretty easy to understand. But looking at your budgeting, your condition assessment, um, just your organization. Uh, the last session there was an organization question, right? You know, do you have an IT department that's supportive? Do you have the people in the right place? Do you have the right training? So all these things are important. So next step, or next slide. Um, ISO 55000, has anybody heard of that? So this is a multinational organization, uh, international. It's uh, really led by the Australian and the British who uh, are much further ahead with formalizing their asset management than we are in the United States uh, for regulatory reasons. But the words I haven't read again are what I think are the most important, those four. And if you look, it's not, one is technology, um, but there's nothing in there about data. You gotta have your data, right? But really, it's, it's understanding how all those work together. And really, if you're looking to transform your business, it's, it's bringing all those different things together. So it's kind of similar to the, the previous slide. But again, it's just understanding all these different things and not just going in and saying, okay, we're gonna go buy a system like CityWorks and now we're doing asset management, because that's not true. You have to understand how you're gonna use it and what you're gonna do with it. So, next slide. Um, APWA, you guys familiar with that? Anybody? I'm sure a lot of people work with them, but uh, anyhow, if you look here, in 2018, they said out of the top five um, areas that they consider the most important, GIS and asset management are both in those top five, so. Kudos to our group, right? That's where we are. Um, but really, it's, it's understanding this is what your DPW managers are going to be looking at. This, this is the, the organization they belong to. These are the trade journals that they read. So they're going to see that this is important to them. So if you're not doing asset management now, if you're not doing CMMS, it's time to start talking to them about this because they're seeing it, they're hearing about it. So next slide. All right, so these are more of, uh, you know, again, where are you now? It's, it's always important to understand that, and where do you want to go? You gotta have a goal, right? And uh, these are just some of the criteria. Myself as a cult consultant, we always talk to our potential clients about understanding, hey, what are my deficits? What, what, where do I have data gaps? Where do I have gaps in my organization? Where do I have gaps in server capacity or technology that I want to distribute out? And then understanding, I want to be able to do X, Y, and Z. I want my regulatory reporting. I want to be able to do some of the cool things that uh, you saw Raleigh, if you were in here a few minutes ago, you saw them doing. Um, but really, it's, it's starting out, figuring out how you're going to get there. So, no. And I'll add one thing here. Um, Asheville decided we were interested in asset management when we discovered we couldn't answer some of the questions our citizens or council members or department heads were asking us. Basic questions like, how many potholes did you repair last week? And we had to dig through paper files to answer those questions. And when you're trying to answer questions like that for a whole neighborhood, it gets really, really resource intensive. So that was one of the reasons why we decided to head down this track. All right, so um, here's two quotes I always use. And the first is uh, Yogi Berra. He's a great procrastinator of wisdom, right? You know, <laughs> so if you don't know where you're going, you're gonna end up someplace else. So please, if you're going to start heading down this road, have a plan in place, because if you don't, you're not, you're not going to get to where you intended to go. Um, and then Carl Pearson, has anybody heard of this guy? 
great mathematician back in the 1800s, um, he said that's what is measured in proofs, that is what is measured in reported improves exponentially. So, um, Sarah just said it, reporting, right? So if you've got data and you're able to report on that data and you can start analyzing it, you're gonna improve um, a lot of your organization. So, next slide. Um, the other thing, this is a little humorous take on expectations, right? And if you look at the, the right side, these are the different groups you're gonna be working with within your organization. I guarantee you every single organization and probably every single person within those organizations has a little bit of a different idea of what success is gonna look like on a project like this. So it's, it's your job, it's our job to understand that and bring that together so you can have a successful project. But this is huge because if you don't do this up front, you don't define what the project is, you don't define what success is, you're gonna have somebody who's not happy, right? So let them get their say in, start figuring out what are their requirements? What are their functional requirements? If you're talking about integrations, what do they have to do? What kind of data are you moving back and forth? Um, what do the field users want to do? What do they not want to have to do? Um, this, this is where project success starts. So, next slide. Um, so what we do, and we did this with Asheville, is we, we kind of come in and phase one, we, we just assess where you are, right? It's pretty simple, it's a diagnostic. Where are you, what are you doing, what are you doing right, what are you doing wrong, what do you want to be able to do? Um, so next, um, from there we develop what we call a roadmap, and we go in and we develop all these different projects or sub-projects that make up the overall goal. You know, what do these things look like? Um, I know Sarah has a cartoon later, so I'm going to steal, <laughs> but you know, it's, how do you eat an elephant, right? It's one bite at a time. So that's what these are. These are little sub-projects that you can do. We help you figure out, okay. Fiscal year one, we can afford this much, we can do this much, so this is what that would look like. This is where you're gonna spend your resources and your time, and year two, this is what you're gonna do. So by year whatever, you're, you're reaching your goal, but you have to have these little sets of, of sub-projects set up so you can be successful. And with that, it's, it's time for you to change your organization, right? So Sarah's gonna spend some time now detailing what Asheville's doing. So um, in Asheville, this is uh, the next couple slides is kind of how we went through our process. Um, we knew we needed stakeholders, so we tried to figure out who has uh, the authority to make decisions and set goals for us. That's our department and division managers. Uh, who has time to commit changes in the long run? Those are our champions. So lots of involvement with IT, GIS, other partner depart departments like finance, and Raleigh talked about the governance team. We stole that idea from them. We're forming a team to help decide, make decisions as we move forward. So as CityWorks grows throughout our organization, say Public Works where I'm at, we don't ruin something that the water department's already set up as we move forward. And then of course there's regulatory compliance issues that come up. We've just had a stormwater um, audit and so there's a few things that we know now we want to improve upon. So. We'll keep going forward with those. Um, of course, we had to get organized, figure out what are the assets we're going to try to work on for this project. What are we responsible for? We have all these different people out in the field doing work on streets, activities, stormwater activities, sanitation, pickup activities. And we had to figure out what work is done to keep all these assets functional. So I'll go into each of these categories a little bit more. Uh, we started with um, a process looking at our standard operating procedures, figuring out where we're at right now. And turns out our SOPs were not so great, not so updated. Uh, so we kind of started over and made a little worksheet of just figuring out what do we do now? Where, why do we do the work we're doing? Uh, is there any information we're capturing that needs to go somewhere else? If we're capturing it and it's going into a report and nobody's looking at it, then why are we doing that? Are we wasting our time? Is this effective information? Um, and throughout the process, our staff was able to identify room for improvement, things they could do now before we even went down the, the path of adding new software. So as Lou was saying, asset management is not just buying a piece of software. It's changes you can make with your own staff currently. Uh, we looked at our data. We've got data all over the place. <laughs> we've got data in GIS. We've got spreadsheets. We've got paper documents. It's everywhere. So we tried to get ourselves organized, uh, converting some stuff from paper to digital, trying to make that consistent so it can be used in one application. Um, reporting was a really big deal. That was 
our one of our big motivators for wanting to go down the asset management path. Um, one of our, our depart or division managers has this saying, we need to tell our story. Uh, other people weren't hearing us when we said we had budget needs or what our priorities were for our operations, and people just weren't hearing our story. So we needed to do that better. And asset management was one of the tools we wanted to use to do better. Um, we were having trouble monitoring our progress. How, how well did we do knocking out a backlog of work orders this month compared to last month? We don't know. We've got to dig through paper in order to figure that out. Um, council, citizens, other department heads were asking questions that it took us forever to answer because we're digging through paper. So we wanted to do better, and by collecting all this data in a software system, we would be able to um, have an easier time applying for grants or rep reporting to um, all the citizens that are asking questions or news reporters or other staff, and hopefully in emergency events, we're a little bit better prepared. Um, integrations is another thing we considered. There are so many options out there, it's a little overwhelming, as you can see by the list on, on the screen. Uh, we decided to only tackle two in our first implementation. Um, our water department went first, and they didn't do any integrations. They just got CityWorks up and running, and that was awesome. And now Public Works is a second department, and that's where I'm located. And we're going to do two integrations, one with our citizen interaction uh, software and one with AVL, uh, vehicle locators. So in the future, we have plans to add in some of these things on the list, but we're taking it a little slow. Um, and the last bit here is staffing. As you heard from Raleigh's presentation uh, just before us, they started out with one person trying to manage all of this. Um, we kind of kept that in mind as well. We've got, we've identified project managers for each of our projects. We've got a team of technical staff that can support things. We've got different people throughout the department that can help make decisions. When everybody throws out all these great ideas, somebody's got to say, all right, this is the final decision. This is how we're going to move forward. And then we've got so many staff that are really excited about this project. Um, they really care about making their work a little easier making uh, reporting better. So they're really motivated, and so they're volunteering to help out and do some of the legwork. You may have heard some of these problems in your own department if you're sitting here wanting to learn about asset management. Um, a lot of times you get complaints from citizens or you hear your coworkers grumbling, there's got to be an easier way. So we're hoping to solve a lot of the problems uh, by going forward here with asset management. Uh, real quick, um, integrations, and even um, configuring an asset management system or CMMS system, I always use a statement that you got to start at the end, right? What do you, what do you want out of this? I, I said a minute ago, functional requirements, what data do you want to move back and forth? What questions do you need to answer? Um, when we're talking about setting up CityWorks in particular, if you're going to be doing analysis work on the back end and, and starting to do asset management, you gotta make sure you're getting the data up front. So that goes all the way to the beginning. So we gotta start at the beginning or the end, right? What, what do you want out of this thing? That's where we really need to start and we're gathering functional requirements to do integrations or to do your analysis reporting on the back end of this. So, next slide. Um, yeah, so we've, we've said this, don't wanna beat a dead horse, but uh, it's more than implementing software, right? There's, there's workflows, there's SOPs, what, do you have any data? Do you want to migrate it? We talked about integrations, um, a long-term relationship, having industry knowledge. All these things are important. So as you're selecting your software or your vendor, um, obviously you want to talk to me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, be sure that you're, you're capturing all these, these criteria because you're going to need all these things to be successful in the long run. So, so Asheville chose Timmins Group and CityWorks as our solution, our, our implementer and solution of choice. Um, how we got there is we put out an RFP starting with our water department and talked to bunches and bunches of different asset management applications and decided on CityWorks. A um, whole host of reasons, but it kind of boiled down to we needed a, a solution that would really tie in well with RGIS. That was something, that was one of the problems we were facing is in all of those questions, the citizens and various people would ask us is they're always wanting to know about a specific location. 
what have you done in my neighborhood or the census tract or this part of the of of the city or there's all sorts of different locations people are concerned with. And so we knew whatever asset management system we went with, it had to be really tied in well with our GIS. Um, and we wanted something that had been around for a while and was really, um, had a, a great user group. So as you heard from Raleigh, they have a really good relationship. There's a lot of support. As you may have noticed if you were here in the last session, a lot of people raise their hands, they're CityWorks users. So that was really helpful for us knowing we can talk to people like yourselves and build those relationships and get some great ideas. So we went through the whole RFP process, chose Timmins and CityWorks, and our water department went live last spring, and our public works uh, department is right now going through implementation. And so that's gonna cover about 130 employees, 140 employees, um, and that covers our streets, our stormwater, and our sanitation groups. Um, lessons learned throughout our process, uh, definitely talk to other organizations that are similar to yours. We did a, quite a bit of that. Checking references, uh, we visited a few organizations to kind of say, show me what it's like a day in your life. Show me what it's like for field staff to have mobile devices. Oh, that was another huge deal for us, is we wanted a mobile application. Our current work order system wasn't tied to GIS, didn't have a mobile component, and that was really frustrating. It limited our capabilities. Um, so we went and visited and talked to all sorts of other organizations and found out what was working well for them, what was a struggle, and how were their situations similar or different to ours. Um, there's a, a couple of professional groups out there about asset management. IPWEA is the group that Lou mentioned earlier in talking about the ISO. Uh, they have classes that you can take online that are with a worldwide class. Uh, you can learn about asset management. There's another group called IAM, it's Institute of Asset Management, I think is what they're called, or International Asset Management Group, something like that. Um, you can learn about this, it's, it's a wealth of knowledge out there. Um, but definitely start small. Uh, that was the best advice we got from other organizations is don't try to do it all at once. Um, with the integrations or with adding lots of uh, different business groups at once, it's, it's just too much to handle. Start small and you can grow over time. So plan ahead. Determine what is the best for you, not what's the best for somebody else. Just because it worked for somebody else doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you. So definitely do your homework and figure out what's going to work for you. Don't let somebody just sell you on this awesome product or this way of doing things. If your situation is different, definitely do your homework. All right. And I've got, what, three minutes to talk about emergency trends. <laughs> so this is where the industry's going. It's already there, really. So there's some really cool, exciting things that are happening. Um, one, um, the analysis part of this data, um, and I'm just biased, this is CityWorks again, but you can start looking at all these, these data components that you're collecting, and you can start doing some predictive analysis. Like, you're looking at your probability of failure, your consequence of failure. You know, I mentioned the, the water line into the hospital. If that fails, there's big consequences for that. And what's your business risk exposure? You know, you need to start looking at these things from a political component, from a budgetary component, from a, hey, this is, this is a high value asset we have, things like that. Um, defining your maintenance strategy. So this is working with your operations folk and understanding, hey, all our roads, we want them to have a PCI score of X. Our maintenance strategy is to do what to keep our PCI score where we want it. How do you get that into CityWorks and help the tools let you know where you need to do maintenance? What are some assets you just let run to failure because it's not worth keeping those maintained anymore? What are the assets that need a lot more maintenance more regularly than some others that don't need it? Um, water lines is a good example. A lot of organizations just carte blanche say, we're going to take this quad area of the city, we're going to do uh, flushing on this area this year. And then the next year they do the next one. So with a tool like this, you start to identify that's not the best way to maintain those assets. There's going to be certain assets that have a higher risk have more maintenance needs in other areas or other lines, so you can now do directed maintenance to keep yourself at the, the goals you want to keep. Um, let's see, another one is citizen engagement. So let's see, next slide. 
Who has ever run into this? I mean, I'm, I'm lazy. If I see issues out there, I, I'm willing to report it, but I want it to be easy. So you don't want to have this complex reality where, hey, I call the city and they say, well, the street light's not ours. You need to call the utility company, right? Or, oh, the sidewalk belongs to the city and I called the county. Just, it, it gets too complex, right? Is this, is this true? Everybody's, I see a lot of heads nodding. So how, how do you take care of that? How can your organization help take care of these things that people are running into. So there are these, these mobile apps. I think Raleigh said they're using C Click Fix. Uh, City Source is another that's out there that allow you to take um, with, a, with a phone, you get a GPS coordinate, you can report the problem, you can take a picture, you send all that data somewhere. If it's your city that owns this, they, you can then distribute that to the power company, you can distribute it to the, the utility company, whoever, or you can ingest that. Um, working with CityWorks, you can have an API that takes this data right into CityWorks, creates a service request, you route it internally the way you need to. These apps can be anonymous or the, the citizen can actually leave their contact info. You can have automated systems set up to get back in touch with them to say, we received it, thank you for reporting it, or we received it and hey, you know, we intend to take care of this issue next week. And then when the issue gets taken care of, you can send them another message, whether text or email, whatever, saying, thank you again, we've taken care of your issue. You know, thanks for, thanks for being a good citizen. Um, let's see, next. Um, yeah, this is the perfect service request. I'm not gonna get into detail about that, but uh, it's really understanding that you're getting all the data you need to be able to respond appropriately. Um, for those that were in here, Raleigh showed something like this too. You can take a lot of data now, and it's very easy to make this public-facing data. You can filter data sets as to what you want to expose that to the public. Very important for things like, um, hey, what's going on in my neighborhood today? Here's what's going on. Or sending out road closures to emergency crews so they know to avoid certain roads if, the, if there's an emergency call. Um, after storm events, hey, what is my city doing to clean up? What are we doing to take care of all these issues out here? Just exposing this data out to the public um, is powerful, and it, it cuts down on phone calls to you, et cetera. Um, let's see. I mentioned that a minute ago, asset management approach, but really understanding your assets and how you're going to maintain them. There's a host of knowledge you can start putting into this from political factors to age of the asset. Hey, is this ducked iron pipe in acidic soil? That gets at a different rating than one not in acidic soil. Um, something placed 50 years ago has a certain service life versus something 10 years ago. It's understanding all that criteria, and this, this particular map shows directed maintenance. The areas in red, they need more maintenance than the, the assets in green. So again, understanding how you're going to send your crews out to do maintenance and getting proactive with your maintenance instead of being reactive. And then, you know, this is, you can do this now, it's just getting into predictive modeling and, and having these defensible models so you can go to city council, county council and say, we need X dollars to maintain our assets at this level. And whether your budget gets cut or they want to move it around, you can then rerun your numbers and say, that's fine, cut my budget 10% this year so we can fit. However, you need to know cutting this budget 10% this year is actually gonna cost us 20, 25% over the next five years. And let me show you the math to, to uh, defend that. So it's, it gets to be very powerful stuff. So um, yeah, that's the financial stuff. So questions? Are you feeling overwhelmed? It's a lot to do, no? Feel okay? All right. So the question is, do we have to completely build it? Do you wanna? Not really. <laughs> um, so we hired Timmons as the consultant to help guide us through the process. We had a lot of data in GIS already, and so they provided some guidance about some key attribute fields that we'd want to add to our schema. So there's a few changes, but no, it's pretty much take what you've got and it'll work. Any other? One more question. Good. So you probably got a lot of proposals. I'm wondering what was maybe one of the big differences that you guys would say was different. Okay. So the question is asking more related to the RFP responses. What made us go with CityWorks over some of the other 
respondents. Okay, so we knew we wanted something that was gonna give us that strong GIS connection. Some of the other vendors out there have a little weaker connection. CityWorks sits right on top of your GIS. There's not a nightly job that has to update things. And so that was pretty appealing to us. Um, another thing was the mobile application. There's native apps, there's other apps you can add on. There's a lot of options. And so that was something we were struggling with. Um, we were really interested in, I mean, cost is always a factor. There's a wide variety of applications out there and this one fit within our budget. Um, there's like the user experience. That was a big thing for us. Uh, we have people of all sorts of different levels of technical experience, and we wanted something that was gonna work for somebody who's not used to using smartphones or databases or any sort of GIS application. Although we have, a, our staff is pretty GIS friendly, that they've been using Collector a good bit and um, explore apps on their phone. So that's, that's helped them grow over time. But those were some of the, the pretty important things we were looking for. And then of course you can get down into fine detail. But definitely shop for the things that your organization needs. Thank you very much right. for your presentation. Thanks everybody.